Thunderdome Box and Talk. All right, this video is about the fight hype interviews that Andre Ward has taken part in. Uh, I believe they were like yesterday morning. Uh, he said a few things, asked a bunch of questions, and no one answered the questions. It was a round table of uh, media, most of them fight hype, and all pushing like the same agenda. Um, and no, it's not a racial agenda. However, um, race was talked about, but it wasn't about necessarily racism. Um, slightly, but not really. You know, Ward even said, please don't say this is about racism. So, But one of the first things he said, um, and you can go watch the Fight Hype interviews. Uh, maybe I'll post the link in the description box, but there's two of them. One of them, is, you can just go to the Fight Hype page. That's where I saw them. So there might be other videos with the same interviews. The one where Fight Hype, uh, the title has Andre Ward, Triple G, Crybaby. Because um, he called, or Spoiled Brat, my bad. He called Triple G a spoiled brat. And the other one was about double standards and biased, uh, bias in the boxing community. I guess Dante's finally getting, you know, other people to start, you know, spouting off his same bullshit. Um, one thing, all right, this is Andre Ward. He said, one thing about, I had to write him down because I wasn't going to, like, play the video, stop it, talk, play the video, stop, talk, but I wrote it down exactly, basically what he said. Um, he said, one thing about African-American fighters I don't like, um, and then he said, why is it okay for some fighters to be soft-spoken, he's talking about himself there, um, not say much, and... Well, actually, he's talking about Ward and himself, or, or Ward and Golovkin. He's talking about himself and Golovkin. He said, why is it okay for some fighters to be soft-spoken, not say much, and they get promoted? Um, not by their promoters, but by media members, like writers and, you know, commentators and things like that. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty easy question to answer. You know, if you have a fight either against a tomato can or a decent fighter and you stink the joint out. Because let's not ever, ever lie to ourselves or the boxing community and say that Ward has ever had, like, this amazing, exciting fight that you can watch, you know, three years from now. Time and time again, you can just keep watching this fight. Um, I'll watch Andre Ward film studies over and over, but a full fight? No, I can't sit through that. Um, okay, so why would a media member, a journalist, because he went and said he'll read things, so journalists, why would a journalist write a glowing piece promoting you if you stunk the joint out or you fought a nobody? Um, or you just don't ever fight at all. Why are they going to write a glowing piece about you when, you know, maybe on the same card, the same weekend, another fighter, not even talking about Triple G, just any other fighter might have been in a, a tremendously exciting fight where fans were on the edge of their seat, they were standing up screaming, the house was packed, you know, an exciting fight. Of course they're going to write about that fight and, you know, the excitement involved in it. But let's go to Triple G, because that's who he's really talking about. All right, why are they going to write this glowing piece? And they have written many glowing pieces about Andre Ward, even when they were, like, not deserved. Um, but when somebody is, you know, beating the shit out of somebody knocking motherfuckers out, calling everybody out, trying to unify a division, something that hasn't been done since 2006. I mean, do you know how uh, historical that can be? I mean, that's history. That's history. Uh, you know, unifying a division, something that hasn't been done in 10 years, about 10 years. That's historical. You know, the first guy to unify division within 10 years, historical. 
knocking motherfuckers out, not ducking anyone, calling out everybody. I mean, trying to fight the best. If he can't fight the best, you fight the next guy um, under him, the, the best guy you can get in the ring, put it that way. You know, he's made multi mil He's offered guys more money than Floyd Mayweather pays his opponents to get into the ring with him, and they've turned it down. Okay, so he's clearly being ducked. And don't ever say he ducked Laura, because just today Laura released a statement saying, I would like to have a rematch with Canelo, but if that can't happen, I wouldn't mind fighting Golovkin if his people reached out to me. Hey, Laura, if you want to fight, how about you send Golovkin an offer? Because guess what? Golovkin, just like Laura, is trying to shoot up into a better fight, a big money fight, a uh, bigger money fight than he's used to. Golovkin's trying to do the same. Why is he going to go after a guy that's going to bring him less money? Okay, why is he He's going to chase a fight that might be a pay-per-view fight rather than just your average fight? You know, I can understand Laurel wanting that fight, but why would Triple G want that fight when he can go have a pay-per-view fight? All right, now, if... And why would Triple G send an offer down to a 154-pound fighter? That isn't the... He ain't even on the pound-for-pound pound list, first of all. Um, and, you know, Floyd Mayweather is, like, ba basically still the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter in the world. The biggest fucking name in all of boxing. Um, that's a bit different, all right, than going after Laura, someone who... No one even knows who the fuck he is outside of us. All right. Um, so why would they write, you know, why would the media promote a uh, 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 Triple G over you? Um, maybe because he's exciting. Maybe because he's doing things that you are not. He's active. He's fighting four times a year. The best guys he can get in the ring. You can criticize his competition all you want, but you better always say after that, like, yo, he ain't never fought no, like, top A-level guy yet, but it's because none of those guys will fight him. Okay, and don't say, well, Andre Ward wanted to fight him. Laura wanted to fight him. Like I said before, Laura, I asked them, uh, Tom Loeffler. Laura has never tried to make the fight with them. He never even reached out to them ever about even the possibility of fighting them. So how can you duck someone who never even tried to fight you? Now, mind you, uh, Ward and Floyd fans and Laura fans, Laura sent multiple offers to Floyd Mayweather, and he ignored every one of them and never responded once. So, why don't you stop saying Triple G is ducking Laura and saying your homeboy Floyd Mayweather is scared of him and will not fight him. And don't say, oh, well, it's because Laura brings no money. Because why aren't you saying that for Triple G? Oh, Laura brings no money. I don't say that. I'm just saying, you know, the the why would he shoot at a lower guy when he can shoot at a bigger guy? You know, established pay-per-view stars. You know, we all know Floyd ain't never going to fight an established pay-per-view star unless he's in the decline or shot to shit. But why won't he fight Lara? You know, especially when Lara actually tried to fight Floyd a few times. So how about you start talking about that? And Ward, how many times do I have to repeat myself? And not just me, many other channels. Ward was given an offer of 64 50, 50. Shitty offer, whatever, but that's business 101. I go low, you go high, we meet in the middle. And what do you think that middle would have been? It would have been 168 with Golovkin getting the bigger chunk of the money. You think when they made that offer, they didn't think a counter offer was coming back? They were waiting for that counter offer, but it never came.
So yeah, Ward really wanted that fight, huh? Instead, he straight up avoided that fight. But then after Golovkin announces he's in a pay-per-view fight, he sends him an offer. Now, what did they say? Well, we have a set plan right now. But after that, let's talk. Maybe we can make the fight again. And what that plan is, is unify all the titles. And that's going to take all of 2016. So, hey, 2017, maybe we can do that fight. Ward should have been happy for that. All right? Um, because let's not forget, he had the chance a few months earlier to actually fight Triple G and didn't want it. But all through the interview, he keeps saying, I've been wanting to fight him for years. But how come it's a known fact? I believe it was the Macklin, Triple G Macklin fight, when they do like the fighter meetings before the fight. They asked Triple G, are you ready to fight Ward? He said, yep. They said, Ward, you ready to fight Triple G? He said, nope. But he's been trying to fight him for years, huh? You know, if he was really dying to fight this guy, how come when Triple G sent him an offer, he didn't say, no, that offer sucks, but here's what I will do. 168, 60, 40. If he would have sent that counter offer, Triple G would have had no choice but to take it, or he would have been looked at as, like I said before, a big, wet, fat pussy. All right, and his whole image would have been destroyed, so he would have taken it. And then the fight would have been on. And that's why Ward never sent that offer. It's either that, or Ward never could make 68 in the first place, and he played us boxing fans the whole time and was just using Triple G's name to get his name out into the, you know, the medium mix again. All right, what was something else he said? He said... There's this thing about African-American fighters where they tell us, like, you got to do a little bit more. You have to show us something. And I, uh, uh, hold on. All right, you have to do a little more. You have to show us something. They're not saying you have to show us something or we won't put you on TV. Because God forbid the guy hasn't done a fucking thing since two. he beat a B-plus fighter. And uh, I used to call Froch A, but I really evaluated his whole career after he retired. The guy's a B-plus fighter. He never beat an A-level fighter. He When he fought an A-level fighter, he got completely owned. So he's not an A-level fighter. He's a B-plus fighter. So Ward also has never beat an A-level fighter. What's a better resume? A guy who goes, uh, who has less fights... Can't even stop C-level fighters. Goes, and I'm not talking about Paul Smith, because that was like a D-minus level fighter. I'm talking about the C-level fighters he fought. Can't even stop those guys. Um, the best win of his career is a B-plus level fighter. And I will say, Frotch is exactly equivalent to the, like, Frotch at super middleweight is the equivalent of David Lemieux in the middleweight division. And uh, Miguel Kessler in the 68-pound division is the exact equivalent to Martin Murray at, when he was in the middleweight division. Okay? So, Ward's two best wins are basically matched by Triple G. But, Triple G has more fights... And has the highest KO ratio in middleweight championship history and has knocked out his last 20 in a row. Alright. Ward just got done fighting Paul Smith. And before that, he fought a C-level fighter in Edwin Rodriguez. Couldn't even get him out of there and got punched right in the mouth. Clean as fuck about 100 times. Well, maybe not 100, but like 60 times. Um, and it was the most, like, ugliest fight you could ever want to watch, right? And he says, I, it's a common denominator among all African-American fighters that they are all told, you know, they're all basically, uh, told they need to do more, um... Uh, you gotta show us something, they're not promoted well, 
Oh, really? You're trying to tell me Tim Bradley ain't promoted well? You're trying to tell me Terrence Crawford isn't promoted well? You're trying to tell me Keith Thurman isn't promoted well? You're trying to tell me Sean Porter isn't promoted well? You're trying to tell me even a guy, a prospect, maybe now a contender like Errol Spence, who has done nothing, isn't promoted well? Spence has done nothing, and he's promoted probably better than you, Ward. Why? Because even though he beats, he's beaten nobody, he comes to fight, right? And what do all those fighters I just listed have in common? They all come to fight. They all go for knockouts. They all excite the fans. They all give the fans their money's worth. Something Ward don't do. That's why the guy can't even sell out in his own backyard. He can't even sell like half the tickets in his own backyard. But Golovkin, because he's exciting, knocks people out, got skills, is you know, is exciting, um, got a big punch, uh, is active. Oh, he can sell out in Cali, Ward's home state. Triple G can sell out in Ward's home state, and Ward can't even sell out there. And he can sell out in the mecca of boxing on the East Coast. And if they put him down in Houston, guess what's going to happen? He's going to sell out there, too. <laughs> you know? I mean, no. The only boxers that he is really thinking of or should have said are guys like Lara. Guys like uh, Rigo on a every other fight. Because uh, some fights Rigo really comes to show out. And some he just stinks to join out like last night. Uh, or, yeah, last night. But, uh, you know, Lara. Good fighter. B-plus fighter. I'm not going to call him an A. Because uh, he, he, he's pretty limited. But solid. Solid B-plus. Uh, when all you do is... Jab, back up, jab, back up, boom, 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 back up, boom, back up. Guess what? That's not going to sell, buddy. And they're going to tell those kind of fighters uh, that style, that amateur point scoring, um, let's win on a decision. If the knockout happens, the comet comes, but I'm not going to go for it in any kind of way. Yeah, those guys need to do a little more. And if... And if they don't want to do a little more, then they can't be mad that they're not getting buku bucks. All right. They're not Floyd Mayweather. Ward is not Floyd Mayweather. There's only one Floyd. All right. He can fight like that and make enough money because he has a big fan base and a bunch of haters that want to see him lose. So that helps with everything you know, numbers-wise, and makes him the money. Um, what else did he say? He said he sees that, you know, as a common denominator amongst all African-American fighters. Well, how come Tim Bradley makes a minimum, a guaranteed minimum of three times the amount of Andre Ward? Why? Because the guy is always in a tough, and he always fucking brings it. All right, why is Crawford being so hyped and promoted? Great, because he fucking brings it. All right, Thurman brings it. Porter brings it. Ward, don't bring it. All right, it's not rocket science. It's not just because, and another thing, the, the African-American style was honed from, you know, right before the 1900s to the 1950s, 60s. These guys honed that style like the Charlie Burley era, Archie Moore, uh, Ezra Charles even, guys like that, right? They honed a style that would help them be able to fight often, um... Always be ready to fight. Uh, not take much punishment so they could do the, like, often, fight often. Uh, always be ready to fight. Win fights, even though they would get the shaft and get robbed, robbed a lot of times. Um, 
And it was the style of the, the slickster. You know, I'm going to fight on points. I'm going to use distance, counter punch, work my jab, my angles, turn you. Um, that style was there because these guys would have to, they wouldn't get paid a lot. So in order to make a great living for them and their family, they had to fight often. They couldn't come out and fight like these, like oh, a white guy and just, you know, that would get a lot of money compared to them. And he could be a little more reckless and take more damage and have a shorter career, but would make more money than them, even if he had a 10-year career and they had a 20-year career. So they needed to fight for 15, 20 years, uh, but, you know, to support their family and everything. Um, but they had to make sure that they'd be able to fight for such a long period of time. In today's day and age, with the money these fighters are getting, that style is not as necessary in the fact in the way that they have to be extremely careful. Like they can still fight that style, but they can also open up. Like open up with their hands, let their fucking hands go. Go for the kill, go for the knockout, you know. Uh, excite the fans, give the fans their money's worth, make the fans want to see them again, like Crawford, like Bradley, like Thurman, like Porter, I mean, come on, like Amir Mom. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is, um, he said, it seems like African Americans are asked to do certain things to be a draw or to sell. They're not asked. They are just told, look, you want this much. And he's talking about himself. He ain't talking about African American fighters. He's talking about himself. And he's trying to, to, even though he says, please don't make it about race, he's trying to make it about race. Um, look, they want to, Ward's asking for a lot of money. All right, but how can they pay him if he headlines a card and stinks to join out and then next fight, no one shows up, but they still want to pay it. He wants two, three, four million bucks. And now guess what? The promoter just lost their ass. All right, but if they would have had an exciting fighter in that ring, guess what? They wouldn't have lost their ass. They would have made a profit. All right. Excitement brings fans, which brings money. All right, if you're not exciting, there's no money to go around. It's not rocket science. Uh, he and then he said, "Why do they want me to go up to 175 so bad? Because there's a perceived threat there." No one ever asked you to go to 175. In fact, we were all pretty much convinced that you were going to have one fight at, what, 72 or 73 or something, and then go back to 68. And there was a perceived threat there as well. Deagle. And then you fight one or two more fights, maybe one more good guy and a scrub, and then in 2017... We get Golovkin. Alright? But why didn't he do that? Probably because he couldn't make 68. But he wants to make it someone else's fault. You know, did he come... Did, did HBO tell him to come back at light heavyweight? No. Not at all. Uh, did he say, hey, I'm a light heavyweight now and... I am not going to fight in the 175-pound division without knocking on Kovalev's door. Did HBO tell him to say that? No, he was inter being interviewed by, I think, Fight Hype and said that. So, where's HBO and all these... Where Who's forcing him? All right? He signed the agreement to fight Kovalev um, or not be able to fight after June or July of 2016. Uh, I mean, come on, man. Come on. You know, no one told him to go to 75. He could have stayed at 68 and cleaned out the division, which he has never done. So please quit saying he did. Um, if, if, if Andre Ward cleaned out the super middleweight division, then Gennady Golovkin 
cleaned out the middleweight division. And how stupid does that sound? Andre Ward had four other good opponents he could have fought when he was an active super middleweight. And he only had two of the belts. So how is that ever clean? How is that cleaning out your division? Like, how? He fought two of the best four uh, fighters. That's not cleaning out your division. And he ducked Butte. He would not fight Butte. His mandatory was Durrell. He would not fight Durrell. So, I mean, dude, you know, he, he has a history of suspiciously maybe probably ducking dudes. Um, Diplo brought it up, you know, pointed it out how he would not fight Adonis Stevenson um, at 68, I might add, then at 75, you know. So the guy is extremely careful. He doesn't fight anybody he can't beat. That's why when he said, why do they want me to move up to 75? Because there's a perceived threat there. Well, well color, you know, <laughs> color me stupid. Ain't that the fucking, the only reason we want to see people fight? Because there's a perceived threat in the other corner? Do we want to watch any fights where we know who's going to win? No, we want 50-50 fights, 60-40 fights. Fights where there are perceived threats to both guys. Alright, Ward is a perceived threat to Kovalev. Kovalev is a perceived threat to Ward. That's why people want to see it. You know? I mean, give me a break. Uh, and then he called Triple G a spoiled brat, right? And he said he's spoiled by the media. Really, is that why the boxing voice, fight hype, which I think are the only places that Ward or Virgil will talk to. Virgil talks to a little more, but I know Ward personally is fight hype's new Floyd Mayweather. Um, they just ride his dick all day long, you know. Um, uh, it, you know, is that why with... Ward, they fight hype, will never ask him a tough question, just like they never would Floyd. But when they go and talk to Abel or Kate Tom Loeffler or Golovkin, or when the boxing voice goes and talks to those guys, they ask leading questions, ask them hard questions, try to catch them, and then make a title about, you know, kind of kind of insinuating that they're ducking Ward. Right? But you never see that the other way. You know? Um, look at the most recent recent or, or, or the most recent interview with Fight Hype where he calls uh, Ward uh, a spoiled brat. They talk about uh, Ward. Ward goes, I sent him an official offer after the, the Lemieux Golovkin fight was announced. Well, no shit they're going to turn that down in five minutes. They already have a fight and then another fight. And they're hoping for Andy Lee, who said he would fight him after that. They have a whole bunch of fights lined up, dude, which are bigger money fights than Ward. Because Ward wants 50% but brings nothing. But brings no money. So if I bring no money to the table, but I want 50%, do you want to take that? Do you want to give me 50% of your money? Of course not. Of course not. You know? Uh, but how come they sit there and talk about that stupid offer when Ward even said, he goes, I didn't know that he had announced a pay-per-view fight. I didn't even know it was on pay-per-view. Really? Fucking really? Really? You didn't know? Like, this guy you're having a rivalry with just signs and announces. Of, and I knew about the pay-per-view fight days before it was announced. I have videos on it. So if I knew about it, you're telling me that Ward's team didn't know about it. Huh. Really? Really? I mean, give me a fucking break. Um, but not one. Not one of the people at that round table, nor Ben Flomo Thompson, says... Well, hey, dude, you know, and Ward also says, I've been trying to fight him for years. But what happens when the HBO execs, like I said, said, uh, Triple G, you ready to fight Ward? Yes. Ward, you ready to fight Triple G? No. 
I thought you were trying to, I thought you wanted to fight him for years. You've been trying for years. Then why would you say no? How about when he said, how come they never brought that up? They never brought up when Triple G sent him the 64 50 50 offer. Shitty offer, but this is business. I go low, you go high, we meet in the middle. How come uh, they never said, well, dude, if you wanted to fight him so bad, how come when he made you an offer, you didn't send, like, you didn't say no and then say, uh, but I will fight. I can't make 64. I can make 68, and I'm willing to take a pay cut. So here's my offer, 68, 60, 40. Like I said before, Triple G would have been locked into that fight. He would not have been able to say no, or he would have been labeled as a huge pussy. All right? So he would have took that fight, and War knew it. That's why he didn't make a motherfucking offer. It's either that, or he couldn't make 68, and lied to the fans, and played us that we thought to, to make us think we might get that fight. But in all actuality, he never intended to fight Triple G and was just using Triple G's name to get his his name back into the mix. Okay? It's only one of the two. Those are the only two outcomes. How come they never asked him about that? How come he never asked them about that? But Triple G's the spoiled brat with the media, huh? I mean, show me one interview where they asked Ward why he didn't make a counter offer. If you show me one interview on somebody asking Ward why he didn't return a counter offer of 168 and a take a pay cut, or even like 50-50 when they made that 64-50-50 offer, if you can show me one motherfucking interview of Ward answer or being asked that question even, I'll stop. I'll, I'll never, I'll be like, oh, Oh, shit, you know? But guess what? It never happened. So, you know, come on. But hey, if you can show me that interview, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll lay off it. Um, Ward's the baby. He's the, the, the guy. He's the spoiled brat in the media. Show me one time the guy's been asked a tough question. Show me one time the guy's been asked a tough fucking question. You know? Never. Never. He's Fight Hype's new Floyd. Alright? up at, w Until Floyd comes back, Andre Ward is their new guy. Right? Fight Hype is not a media outlet. It's a fucking... It, it, it's, a, it's one major fanboy and a couple other fanboys with a camera and a media pass. It's all it is. Alright, and whoever their favorite fighters are, they're going to try and twist shit for them. And if you, I don't know what happened, whatever happened to the days of real unbiased boxing journalism? Whatever happened to the days of real unbi uh, unbiased boxing journalism? I mean, whatever happened to the Burt Sugars? You know, what? I mean, we still have some guys out there, don't get me wrong. But they don't get nearly the play that these biased-ass, agenda-driven channels get. Uh, like, at all. Even Ness was on... Um, I don't watch the Boxing Voice show. I watch their interviews. Um, but uh, I heard that Ness went right on his radio show and said the major majority of uh, people that are calling in hating Triple G are black. Alright, so where does that all stem from? It stems from Floyd and Ward. And they keep using this whole little race thing. And people get drawn into it. Whether the, the some are racists and some aren't who get pulled into it. Um, and it's bullshit. It's bull. Shit. If something is racism, call it racism. But you should maybe eliminate everything else first instead of jumping right to racism. Just like Michael Montero has talked about in his Loma Rigo video. Um, African American fighters who fight like Ward, Lara, Rigo, 
why these guys don't get the fanfare or promotion is not because they are black. Alright? It's not. Um, it, it, it is strictly because the fans just for whatever reason don't like them. Alright? And it's not them personally. It's their style. They don't like their style. They don't like watching their fights. Alright? When your fight puts someone to sleep, they don't ever want to see you again. Alright? When they just sit on the couch like this for fucking 12 rounds, they never want to see you fight again. But when they're on the edge of their seat, like, oh my god, oh my god, guess what? Oh, they're they're surely watching you again. So, you know, it's nothing to do with that. It's about excitement. Giving the fans, you know, uh, their money's worth. Excitement, KOs, big punches, you know, back and forth action. Now, look at, like, uh, uh, Chocolito. You know, he wasn't just going all wild, but guess what? He was fighting his ass off. And people loved it. Look at Golovkin versus Lemieux. Did he come out just swinging like a madman? No, he boxed, but still beat the brakes off somebody and stopped them. All right, so you can still box and beat the fuck out of someone. You know, like use your distance, use your jab, use your angles. You can still do all that and beat the fuck out of someone and stop them. But when you go 12 rounds, they're not even really hurt. Um, you know, you didn't really do shit. <laughs> you know, come on. Come on. It has nothing to do with anything other than a boring style. Now, purists, we still, purists will still watch it and be like, hey, you know, I, I like that. Hey, try to beat that style. But the casuals drive the sport. Who do you think fills the stadiums? Who do you think buys all these mil million pay-per-views or you know 800,000 pay-per-views, even 2 million, 4 million pay-per-views? Who do you think bought all them? Casuals. And if you're not exciting them, well, guess what? The next boxing fight, they're not going to watch it. Or your next fight, they're definitely not going to watch. I mean, Rigo's one of the hands down, one of the best fighters in the world. But do you think his performance last night made anyone ever want to see that guy fight again? I mean, you know, shout out Abel Ultra Jr. The like, his father was talking to. Uh, I mean, like, the, he's his family's all cool with them with Rigo's team. He's his biggest fan in the world. My my son's favorite fighter is Rigo, but Abel was disappointed. And immediately messaged me and said, that was bullshit. Rigo looked like shit. That was terrible. My son was like, I just lost respect for Rigo. I mean, dude, you know, come on. Like, there's no lying here. My son's 10 years old. His two best friends are black. I mean, he's he, he goes to a predominantly black school. Um, we're in a, you know, a, a, a black neighborhood. Um, you know, he's not a racist. So, no, he only didn't like the fight because it was boring. And again, Rigo's his favorite fighter. You know, so it's about being boring. Nothing else. When they say step it up, do more, that's all they mean. Be more entertaining. If you're not entertaining, they don't want to put you on TV. You know why? Because people are going to change the motherfucking channel. And then that takes their ratings down, and that fucks with their money. And it's all about money. Alright? Flat out. If Ward fills the ain't getting promoted right, why isn't he bitching at Rock Nation? Because HBO sure all over his dick. Um... Uh, HBO was sure all over Rigo's dick, even though it was obvious as hell that landing seven punches around and running, clinching, and fighting dirty more than your punching is stinking the fucking joint out. But all they kept saying is how great it was. Up until the last round when they finally realized, you know what, we better just say it like it is. Um, 
you know, it's 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 generally and over the last let's say 30 years, it's generally and historically proven that that points uh, go for points, not do much, try to win a decision style is just hard to market. Who are all the biggest stars outside of Floyd Mayweather? Because he's one of a kind who got lucky. Outside of him, who have been all the biggest stars? All the biggest money makers. They've all been action fighters, man. Who's been all the fan favorites? Action fighters outside of Floyd Mayweather. Action fighters. You know, Ward's just trying to make excuses, and he's trying to, to lump in other fighters with him so maybe they can, like, help him fight the battle. You know, it's... It's bullshit. It, it's total bullshit. I mean, dude, all he has to do is go for the KOs, um, come to fight, please the fans, be exciting, um, and give the fans their money's worth. And guess what? He'll start selling more tickets. People will start to more people will start tuning in to his fights. I mean. What, out of 2015, did he not, correct me if I'm wrong, but did he not have the lowest viewed um, fight on all of TV and it was on regular ass cable? You know, uh, he could have had, I think it was like 40 million people could have watched that fight and 323,000, I believe it was, watched it. I mean, that's bad. That's bad. That means no one is interested in watching this guy fight. But guess what? You know what? You put him in the ring with someone good, put him in there with DeGill. Put him in there with, um, uh, put him in there with Golovkin. Put him in there with Kovalev. Watch how much this guy gets promoted. He will be talked about every motherfucking day until that fight happens. And for a week after that fight. And then maybe he'll learn, hey, if I actually fight good fighters and fight them often, I'll be talked about and promoted tremendously. You know, but I don't think he understands this, man. The guy has a sense of entitlement that I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around. You know, um, did, did, did I talk, did I say that, um, look at Miguel Kessler. He's the, you know, the super middleweight equivalent of Martin Murray at middleweight. Froch is the, the super middleweight equivalent of uh, uh, David Lemieux. Flat out. Whose resume is really better? Ward has less fights, a, a lower KO ratio, fought the same caliber of opponents. Don't fucking lie. Go look before that that Super 6, and he fought D and F-level fighters and nothing but. Um, it, it, you know, and, and you can say the same thing up until uh, about the Ishida Adama fight for Golovkin. But right at that moment, they both started fighting, you know, uh, B-minus to, you know, BB-plus level fighters. Um, but... Golovkin has more fights, way higher knockout percentage, and has knocked out the last 20 and 21, I think, in a row. <laughs> so when you add all that together, whose resume is really better? Is Golovkin's opponents, if you think Golovkin's opponents are a little bit less, okay. But what about he had more fights? And knocks everyone out. That has to come into consideration. It has to. Because all I remember. When I used to say. Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Has never fought a prime. Uh, a level fighter. All he fights is has beens. And B level fighters. And what did I used to hear. It don't matter. Winning 48 fights and never losing. Is still hard as hell. I don't care if they're scrubs. How come no one's saying that about Golovkin? All, you know, it, it fit for Floyd. 
it was a great argument for Floyd in your minds, but for, you know, you don't, it's total hip, hypocrisy and bias, you know. You'll say one thing was good enough for this guy, but it's not the same for this guy. I mean, it's a fucking joke. It, 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 it's a joke. You know, um, like I said, man, you got Bradley Crawford, Thurman, Porter, Amom. I mean, these guys are all, 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 all hyped, great. People love them. People love them. They sell out. Even a guy like Garcia, he ain't black or whatever, I guess. But, you know, they come to fight. They come to fight. They excite the fans. They make sure the fans leave happy. That's what it's all about. You know, these... When you buy a ticket to a fight, it's like going to a ballet or, like, or a play or something. I mean, you want to, or a movie. You want to make sure if it's a good movie, you leave happy. If it's a shit movie, you're pissed. If you go to a fight and it's a great card, great fight, you leave happy. If it's shit, you leave pissed. The whole ride home, you bitch. Uh, if it's good, the whole ride home, you're like, yo, yo, that was, oh my god, you remember that part, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's common sense. You know, common sense, man. Common sense. I mean, when he said Triple G has it easy with the media, I found that hilarious. I don't think any two fighters have it easier with the media other than Andre Ward and Floyd Mayweather. And for the last, let's say, four months, Triple G has maybe had it the hardest with the 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 media YouTube channels that go and interview fighters um, because no one will dare ask Ward a tough question not dare whatever he says they just go with it just go with it I mean whatever happened like to when someone said bullshit like Dan Raphael will call a motherfucker out um, I wish Dan Raphael was at that table, and he would have been like, whoa, 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 what about this? But he won't do interviews with those people. He's becoming like Floyd. Remember how Floyd would only interview with people who would, you know, let him have his way and wouldn't question him on anything? Andre Ward's taking a page out of that book. It's clear as day because that's the only people he's been talking to forever. He won't talk to anyone that asks him a tough question. Um, I was so hoping that he was going to be at the Golovkin fight, but he wasn't. Um, but I'll catch him. I'll catch up with him sooner or later. Uh, and if any of you think that Andre Ward is uh, on the right, tell him to Tell him to give me a phone interview. Tell him to give me a fucking phone interview. To minimum, a phone interview. And and let, let, let's see how he handles that. Straight up. I know one of you guys got connections, or I know one of you knows someone who got connections who can get a phone interview. It's not like he's busy. The motherfucker ain't got a fight coming up. Um, he pulled out of a fight that he wasn't even injured. He needed... Shout out to Diplo, because I watched a, a video from Diplo, and uh, he was talking about the motherfucker needed one week off, and his knee was fine. <laughs> Rigo took the fight on two weeks' notice. Ward was Ward would have had a seven-week camp and couldn't even fight. But Rigo can fight on two weeks' notice. But Ward can't fight on a seven-week camp. The dudes is pampered as pampered fighters get, man. It's, you know, a pampered diva. Pampered diva. But but let Virgil Hunter have Berto. He'll send him in with no game plan. Let him have uh, uh, Amir Khan. He won't teach him dick and send him in with anyone. Uh, let him have Angolo. He'll know Angolo shot this shit, and he'll still throw him in the ring with Canelo. Why? Oh, because he gets 10% of their paycheck, but he pampers Ward. 
you know, I would never, ever let fucking uh, Virgil train, um, you know, one of my fighters if I was a manager. Because he don't give a fuck about no fighter except Andre Ward. And Virgil's a not a good coach. Flat out. Not. I haven't seen him do anything impressive outside of Andre Ward. And I have to believe that because Virgil has done nothing with any other fighter, that it's not so much Virgil, it's just Ward. And the fact that they kind of like stacked the deck against every opponent he's ever fought, um, you know, that helps a bit. Um, let me clinch you 80 times and not even get a point taken away. Let me headbutt you four times and not get a, a warning. Um, let me only fight in my backyard. I mean, come on, man. Pampered. He's the... Uh, actually, I said he was the most pampered fighter in boxing. He... At, at, at the moment, he's the most pampered fighter in boxing. The only p recent fighter that was ever more pampered was Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I remember 78 Sports, shout out 78, did a video about is Ward the most, the new most hated fighter in all of uh, boxing. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, because I actually think Triple G catches more hate, and Manny Pacquiao still catches, I think, more hate. But um, Ward's getting close. And the thing is, Manny and Triple G's hate is not justified. Ward's is justified. Alright? Justified. Like I said, if you think Ward has done nothing wrong, if you have a way to get uh, um, in contact with him, and I'm going to try, actually, my own, through my own um, people, to, to get a phone interview with him. Just at least over the phone. If he's not going to be at a, a fight recently that I'll be at. Um... And let's see how he can handle an interview when someone ain't dick riding him. Let me know what y'all think. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace! <laughs>